Dubai Air Show this year, there was a lot to see. So much so that we're going to be releasing a few videos about what we saw there. But one aircraft was the clear center of attention, and it makes a lot of sense to lead with that. The 777X, making its public debut, stole the show, especially with its flying display. That's interesting because Boeing has been having a tough time with many of its aircraft programs lately. And the 777X is no exception. It's suffered from delays and we still don't know when first delivery will be. It's also interesting that Dubai's home carrier Emirates has been one of the most vocal about its frustrations with those delays. It's also one of the few to have ordered the plane. Meanwhile, it was Airbus that bagged most of the big commercial orders at the show. And still, even with a wide range of intriguing commercial aircraft, military planes, and more on display, getting to see the 777X in person and appreciate just how big and beautiful it is was really a highlight. We managed to get a quick invite on board, and that was fascinating even if rushed. We were going to do another run through just with, the, with oh, me on camera, if that's OK. Thank you. Oh, looks yeah, is that OK? I'm just going to let them know because I don't know what other things they have. Oh, gotcha. He, he was just up there. He just came yeah, down yeah, to do that. Just to come back around. Okay, yeah. perfect. Okay, just don't make sure. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Hello. Hi. All right, let's go over here and then maybe. But we did stick around long enough for Sam Choi to tell us to be quiet and to grab a few other shots. So we've just arrived at the Dubai Air Show. It's just started off and straight away we're into basically the star of the show. We're, we're seeing the, the big event. We're on board the 777X, which is making its public debut uh, here. It just flew in last week. But right now it's all full of ballast and, and testing equipment and, and the likes because it's still a, a test aircraft. Definitely this thing is commanding most of the attention at this show. At one point, Dubai's crown prince Hamdan bin Mohammed al Maktoum made a visit, thronged by photographers. He toured the Emirates A380, but then appeared to stop short of entering the 777X to have a look. That could have been for any number of reasons and may have meant nothing but it was a moment that stuck out. If you thought the pandemic might have put a damper on an event like this, you'd apparently be wrong. This show was absolutely packed. It was the biggest in-person aviation event since the pandemic began, and it was clear people were very eager to get back together, take a look at the hardware, and make some deals. Oh, and if you were worried that there wouldn't be any bagpipes in this video, you'll be pleased to know the Dubai Police Academy has a whole bagpiping unit, and they did make their way through the halls. It 
was nice to see the A380 up close and personal again too. This Emirates example was newly delivered and spotless, and in fact it's one of the last A380s to be produced. It also features the brand new premium economy which has been showing up on some flights, especially to London and Paris. The airline announced they'll be installing it in over 100 additional planes, but we'll give you an up-close look at that and the rest of the Emirates A380 cabin in an upcoming video. It is a fantastic aircraft inside and out, and I think I need to catch a flight on one soon. We also caught up with Embraer, starting off with a look at their E2. It hasn't been landing mammoth orders, but from a passenger perspective, there's no denying it's a very nice plane. This is an E195 E2, and it has some nice cost saving and sustainability advantages over the previous generation, like a 17.3% reduction in fuel burn over the comparably sized E1. This concept here is an innovation that Embraer is bringing, uh, is the staggered seat, okay? What's nice in the staggered seat is that you have a big living space. Let me show you a little. You have a big living space here, and the, the seat moves forward, slides forward, like this. You have a good reclination, and he, he for example, he can come outside without disturbing me. He, he doesn't, it's a slide forward seat, so it's not obstructing the space here for the passenger that's, that's behind you. As is a prototype, we put the, the seat pitch here. Oh, okay. So Very you have fun. different seat pitches, so you can feel. Got it. So, for example, this is a 134, so it's it's big. Yeah, this I would fly <laughs> every time. It's for an Economy Plus, right? I would, I would pick this every day, definitely. And that's a pitch 31. Okay. Pitch 30. All right, so it goes down. If you want to, let, let's sit in the pitch 29, yeah? because it's the... All right, let's try it. Here, pitch We're going to the tightest seats on board. 29. So now we are seated in the pitch 29, and I think you still have yeah, good space. Like it's if okay. You find the seat here. You still have good space. Yeah. All right. Try, try the pitch yeah. 29 and a half. You're gonna oh, see the difference. 29 and a half. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this half yeah. inch difference. Yeah, that's a lot better actually. It's a Funny. lot better. Yeah. So this is something good because you can optimize your your cabin. Yeah. So this is the 29 and a half which actually is way better than the 29. Half an inch does make a big difference in this case. This would be plenty fine for a few hours of flying, I think. Do you have any exciting potential customers in the region right now? No, we are, we are discussing with a lot of customers, but uh, unfortunately we cannot say details. Of but, course, uh, yeah, no announcements yet. A lot of airlines now are looking to, to our segment. Airlines that were not looking now are looking uh, because of the pandemic, right? Because of the flexibility, having a mix of a mixed fleet with large narrow bodies across over jet like like the e-jets could make a lot of sense. The region's carriers brought some very pretty examples to the show, like this retro livery Gulf Air 787-9. I think this was my favorite, although it was a tough choice. What do you think? Standing in front of another very special plane, this one behind me making an appearance at the Dubai Air Show. Uh, it's a new Russian single aisle plane, the Irkut MC-21. And uh, very intriguing aircraft. The problem is, it's very difficult to get in touch with the Irkut Corporation to try and get inside. We haven't managed that yet. We're trying though. For the meantime, we can just admire it from the outside and feel jealous about all the people that are getting tours. I guess if we were in the market for one, about to buy one, maybe we'd get on board. But we'll do our best, and we'll see what we can do. The MC-21 was part of the flying display, which meant we got to watch this mildly tense moment as they towed the thing out of the static display through a pretty tight space.
Did I mention that the opening act for the flying display on day one was pretty impressive? Here's what it looks like when those folding wingtips on the 777X fold down for flight. Then it was the MC-21's turn. Nothing awe-inspiring, but it looks nice enough. Does anyone know why it doesn't feature any kind of fancy winglets? There are plenty of potential customers for private jets in this region, and the larger variety are in demand, so Airbus and others were eager to show off their offerings. This ACJ320neo is owned by Acropolis Aviation and has an interior design by a company called Pinto. So we're on board the ACJ320neo, which is basically an A320neo outfitted as a business jet. And uh, as you can see, taking away the overhead bins, removing a lot of seats, it's maximum 19 passengers, gives you a feeling of a lot more space than your typical A320neo. I think my favorite room is back here because what's better than a double bed while you're flying? And we're not talking turning your seat into a double bed like on Qatar Airways Q Suites. No, this is a real bed that's always just a bed. Here we have a rainfall shower with uh, a wooden floor. This is definitely a step up from something like the Emirates A380 first class shower. Uh, which is in itself a super special experience. I'm guessing there's no time limit on this one. You can probably, well, until the water runs out, you can take a shower to your heart's content. You want me to sit in the corner and you can sit here? Yeah, that's good, right? Let's yeah. try that, yeah. My name's David Fletcher. I'm a captain on the ACJ 320neo. Uh, I work for Acropolis Aviation. I'm the crew training manager. I've flown Airbus since 1998, and I've flown other types as well. Uh, this is the first neo I've ever flown. Uh, the engines are a work of art. They're beautiful. Um, this aircraft, I mean, it does take your breath away when you come inside, as you'll have seen today, right? This is the aircraft that I want to finish my career on. If I can spend another 10 or so years flying this airplane, I'll be a very happy man. It's beautiful. Then 
finally a breakthrough with the Russians. We've been invited on board the MC-21, the Irkut. Uh, it's very exciting to see inside. I have no idea what to expect in there. Let's check it out. Hi. Wow, great. It's okay if we walk through? Yeah. yeah? Very much a test aircraft still. But much less equipment than I would have expected for that. It looks like they have spaces for ballast here that they, that they haven't taken up. Uh, a few monitors and equipment here and then a few seats right in the back. So, And of course all the insulation still exposed and wiring, which is an interesting way to see a plane. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Fine, thank you. Very excited to be on board the plane. Wow, nice to have you. Yeah, it's really nice. My name is Helena Karpovich. I'm a design engineer of Irkut Corporation and also a PhD in aeronautical engineering. And I would like to show you uh, a portion of our passenger cabin uh, that we have here for demonstration purposes. Fantastic, so. yeah. Aside from having what they claim is a very efficient aircraft, Irkut is eager to tell us about the big overhead bins and extra wide aisles. In fact, they've designed it so that passengers and crew can move up and down the aisles even when there's a beverage cart there, which does indeed sound like a nice perk. We have 32 between the rows for uh, single class configuration corresponding to 211 passengers. All we had storage bins. We can place here up to six standard size carrying luggage. The difference is approximately 11 centimeters with A320. Wider than the A320. Yeah, and 30 centimeters for Boeing 737. And also we have quite large windows here. They are actually as large as those of a wide-body aircraft. But probably the most important competitive advantage of our aircraft is uh, the high-speed ratio of the twin. Also, we have new engines installed here, uh, PD-14. Uh, these are Russian engines, and uh, they meet all the uh, future requirements associated with the CO2 emission and noise emission. Though to the most important question as to how they plan to compete with the likes of Boeing and Airbus, we didn't get much info. We try to do our best to make our engines as efficient as uh, those of the competitor aircraft. Because you have to, right, in order to compete. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of then taking this and actually breaking into the market, you know, you, you may have good numbers, but, but it's still a big up, uphill battle, right, I guess. Absolutely. And how, and it's, so does coming to this show and showing off the plane here, is that part of the process that you need to, to undergo to actually sort of say, hey, look, we, maybe you want to buy us instead of the Airbus? Yeah. Nice. One of the flight test engineers was pointing out that there is actually relatively little testing equipment in here compared to the first prototype, that now they're at a more advanced stage in the certification process, so they don't need as much. And he was pointing out that they use metallic plates as uh, the ballast, and they also have some trolleys that they can use to move the center of gravity. They're hoping to deliver the MC-21 to the first airline, I believe, next year. It'll be interesting to follow how it goes, and it and, uh, seemed pretty clear that, that uh, they didn't want to get too much into the question of you know, how do you actually compete with Boeing and Airbus, and can you? But, uh, but that'll, be a, that'll be a very difficult challenge for them, but, but one that will be interesting for us as observers of the industry uh, to follow along as they do. We're going to leave you with that, but stay tuned for the next video coming shortly, where we get inside Embraer's military transport aircraft, the KC-390, we hear about Saab's Global Eye and what it does. We speak with Fly Dubai's CEO and check out the LifeLap business class seat on their 737 MAX. We go on board Etihad's so-called Green Liner to see just how meaningful their sustainability initiatives are. And we also check out Boeing's Eco Demonstrator. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.
For now, in Dubai, for Flight Radar 24, I'm Gabriel Lee.